Good evening, welcome to Fido, your only source for a bad, bad dog. Go lie down. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are at um, live stream 47, actually. Which blows my mind. Wow, well, yeah, I'm just going to write that there so I remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's, uh, what are we doing? Here is, what? Here's next week's comic strip. Of course, I'm not. Of course, I'm not organized. It's Tuesday, Monday, and uh, the previous Saturday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and there's no Friday yet. Huh? Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Let me read these suckers to you. This one we're gonna have to do the background today. We'll finish this off and get it to the chief colorist. This is the joys of pet ownership. <clears throat> uh, Felicia sitting on Bo's head. Fido comes in. Is he asleep? She lifts her tail. No, not yet. Good. I'm hungry. Make me something to eat. And that's Saturday, last, uh, at least the 10th. All right, this is the uh, following Monday. We have um, Bo and Jane. They're having a romantic candlelight dinner. Uh, there are the pets there in the background. I share my food with my pets. That's very nice of you. And uh, meanwhile, Felicia is distracting him while Fido is on the left stealing the food. Empty plate. They're sharing the food. And of course, I try not to. I think the original, you can almost see it here. I cut down the text. It's always uh, brevity is the soul of wit. Uh, of course, I try not to, but they're too fast, I think was the original, um, original dialogue. All right. Just got to do the background on that one and get it off to the chief colorist. Uh, Tuesday, we have uh, Dino and Fido. Whatever does not kill you makes you stronger. I don't care. Stop hitting me with your golf club. Nobody is into self-improvement around here. Oh. Kind of like how Fido's hanging from his golf club. Like he grabbed the club and you know, he's just going to be mm -hmm. part of it, swinging freely. All right, let's put Tuesday aside. Uh, Wednesday, we still have to do a lot of inking on the characters and everything. Um, yeah, the camera picks us up. We have Bo and Fido, and later on Dino. I know that you stole money out of my wallet. I did not. Admit it. Time for my nap. Hey, get back here and tell, tell me the truth. And as he's asleep, enter Dino. Bogash, let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> a homophone, uh, I believe, the words that are the same but have different meanings. All right, this one you cannot see whatsoever. This is a Thursday. Um, we have Bo in the kitchen. Looks like he's cooking. There's Fido in the background, and he's texting. Um, he gets a text. Do you have dinner yet? Smiley face. Yes, I made that recipe you gave me. And he's got the plate, bringing it to the table, and approaching the animals here. Send me a photo. As he tries to click the photo, Fido's already on the table eating the food. I think this is from Jane's hand point of view of the phone. And finally we have Jane in her apartment. Fido said it was good. So we've got to do the finished penciling on that one today. We might do the finished penciling first, I don't know. Uh, but hey, let's get some paperwork done. Um, Fido is now on Rumble. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I just printed these up. This is uh these are my views on Rumble. As I've just started, you know, I got one from yesterday, only one view, one view, four views, two views, three views, one view, nine views, three views. And over here, 1,150 views. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one where um Dino is visiting the dentist and that's what I think is happening, would be the punchline. Um, 1,750. Well, One of these things is not like the other. Hmm. All right, well, let's put Rumble away. And, uh, pencil sharp. So, uh, as I tell you every week, Cartoonists are the filthiest, sturdiest creatures on the face of this planet. And I must wear a glove in order to keep the paper clean. Um, well, hey, one moment while she's looking at me. 
I hope everyone remembers Mia, where uh, she has gone on to Patreon. Um, no, no, actually, she really hasn't. But you can go on Patreon, and um, for a pittance, you can have yourself made into a cartoon character to appear in this very comic strip. Now, I tried, I had an opportunity to put Mia in a strip last week, but um, it was too unflattering. Uh, here is the actual comic strip, um, Fido's walking bow. Cute dog, is he vicious? And then Fido says, is that what you're wearing? What's with that hair? You're never going to get a man like that. Go on a diet. And yes. So if I used that pretty woman for this, she would kill me. <laughs> but now that, we're, um, now that we're talking about Mia, now that we're talking about Mia, we also have now Grace. Grace has asked us to also put her in the comic strip. So there we go. Um, I can't use Grace. I could not. I could never have used Grace for this one either. So I have no idea. Some, I'm working on both of you ladies sometime in the future when I do figure out what I'm going to do as far as a comic strip goes. I'll email you. I'll, I'll IM you. So thank you, Grace, for consenting to be in the comic strip. Now, check this out. This is the uh, president of Turkey, a uh, gentleman by name of um, er Erogan. He's handing out basically $10 bills at the polling places to, for people to vote for him. <laughs> That's all it takes. <laughs> Ten bucks. You know, um, I could probably vote Democrat for Ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> as I used to be. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right, and we'll, well, we'll put aside Disney for later. Oh, and I almost forgot. Last week we spoke about uh, the Target baby clothing. Uh, I printed. I said yeah, I print this up. I See, we've got the uh, we've got the naked women uh, with the word they and he and she over here. And this is a dude. He's got his knees up in front of him, so you really can't see his junk, which is down there. And this is actually someone in a wheelchair who's also naked. Um, okay. So, um, Target. Well, Target's got Target's got a little bit of explaining to do. Here's their Satan display. Oh, mm -hmm. And hey, look at the expression on this kid's face. Is this? Is this the Antichrist or what? <laughs> so, Target, you have some explaining to do. <laughs> no wonder why <laughs> no wonder why people are really upset with you. And I think your stock has dropped a little bit this recently. Is, uh, <laughs> I have no problem with whatever anybody wants to wear. <laughs> I feel. Yeah. I mean, I'd be a little concerned about. Yeah, I, um, there's there's no getting away with that one. I mean, you can't even say there's a reindeer uh, 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 Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> can't even pull up the Christmas card. Yeah, yeah. And um, Biden tripped over a sandbag. I think someone photoshopped the diaper in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, that's, a, that's, that's a Photoshop. I've seen that picture. And yeah, that's a. That does not look real. But my big question is, uh, cartoonist question here, what's he wearing for shoes? I mean, that's, oh, I those, that. those are, those are interesting shoes. It looks like he's got at least an inch lift on the heel. Oh, well, that's... And, um, and very, uh, that, 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 that's, that's non-slip traction rubber. Uh, the Donald had to walk down this really, um, wet metal ramp, and he's wearing these thousand dollar Gucci shoes, which are just leather on the bottom, so he was going to slip Regardless, <laughs> these are non-slip. This this guy is prepared. <laughs> hey, Gucci shoes, you know, they can, they can handle all terrain. I mean, you know, don't get stuck in the middle of the uh, Sahara Desert without your Gucci shoes. That smart footwear is the is the buzzword for elderly presidents these days. Uh, well, at least we know he won't be doing any um, naughty things in the Oval Office. 
is sun might. <laughs> we are supposed to be getting rain all day today. Ah, we're changing the subject already? <laughs> See, that's the code word when she talks about weather. Get up before you get canceled. <laughs> hey, you've already been talks. Come on, so I'm more worried about somebody showing up. <laughs> What'd you say, man? <laughs> What'd you say about my president? Yeah, no, I, I don't think there's anyone who's going to defend Mr. Biden like uh, President Biden like that. Nobody said that. I mean, no one's saying that. <laughs> you know, I, we've been listening more and more to the um, recordings afterwards. Uh -huh. I am surprised at how little the traffic picks up. Yeah, it barely picks you up. I know. Way I over mean, there. You know, <laughs> I even moved the microphone a little bit closer to her this week. It picks me up. <laughs> I'm picked up. Um, and we get her angry, and that's when that Boston accent kicks in. No, I need her pressing that button all day. <laughs> so I'm already still, I'm, I'm still, I'm still in Boston accent mode this morning. <laughs> so, um... I do a lot of chatting online, and I notice when people use a translation program, they always say, how long have you been drawing manga? I don't draw manga, I draw an American-style comic strip. But it's a typical Google Translate screw-up. And um, when they translated a, a story through Google for NBC, or I think maybe, yeah, I think it was ABC, they they called it uh, Review Terrorism. See, uh, the original story wrote Review Bombing, but when they read it through Google Translate, it translated bombing into terrorism. And that's just a wonderful global... <laughs> review Bombing is not that cool a word, but Review Terrorism. Yes, that's what they're doing to, to the Little Mermaid. They're racists over there. It's not a bad film at all. And that Aquafina song is is like milk to my ears. <laughs> squawk, uh, squawk. Milk to my ears. Uh, have you put milk in your ears often, my love? Just a wonderful, sweet, gentle thing that just caresses my ear with its love. Okay, then I might say something like, you know, music. <laughs> That's ears. not music. <laughs> That's just noise Aquafina is uh, making. Milk. <laughs> I want to know where the milk... I'm fixated on this milk in your ear thing. That's throwing me off. What, you, what, you don't put milk in your ears? Never. Not <laughs> once. Not once. And I'd be willing to bet everyone who comments... Okay, cream. <laughs> oh, shit. That make it no. better? That make it better? No. Wow, we just got an insight into their bedroom practices. Ew. <laughs> what does that have to do with the ear? I don't want to know. <laughs> so I am right up, right up close to you now. Yeah. Which you can't tell. Well, they, we can hear you a little bit better on the microphone. Yay. Yay. But my drink is all the way over. <laughs> well, since we have the chief colorist here, why don't we go through her work from last week? Bye. <laughs> well, our favorite segment of the show, the Chief Colorist's work. <clears throat> um, uh, also known as playing into the life's insecurities. <laughs> we've got to uh, film this because this goes up Monday. Um, Bo and Dino. You know, I want to go out with Jane tonight. I'm not staying home. We can't leave Fido and Felicia home alone. I'll hire a babysitter. And... In comes Jane. Jane, you babysit. It's my side gig. I thought you were going out with Jane. She had to work. <laughs> Ends up paying her anyway. Um, let's see. She's done her normal random scribble on the walls in the background from a distance. It sort of reads as a, okay. 
Uh, I'll give you a passing grade on this one. This is the, this is the whitest comic strip in the world. You Need like to, uh, white. <laughs> yes, well, I'm in Boston. Majority of the people are. Don't say that. <laughs> okay. That's just and I, I had not planned on Bo changing to a white shirt, but it works. Of course it's a white shirt. Yeah. And then he changed his pants, even though I figured they'd be the same. Yeah, well, I, I figured this was him before he got dressed for the yes. date. Yes, yeah. well, it is. He's in jeans before the date. Got it. Then he's in his dress pants. See how they sit so closely on the couch, and of course Fido is Not right there, and Jane is right there. Yes, all right. Well, that one worked. Let's see what we got for Tuesday. Uh, it's a continuation of the babysitting one. Okay. They're on the couch, dog and cat just doing the thing they usually do. Hitting each other. Okay, you two, bedtime. Aw, do we have to? Yes, obey your babysitter. Not fair. <laughs> I'm not even tired. You may march off stage left. Now it's time to put you to bed. You can't. They took my bedroom. <laughs> now, did he approve of her boyfriend coming when she babysat? You know, usually you have to get that approved for someone else to, to be in the in house. I don't get it. What do you mean? Who? Jane's babysitting. Uh-huh. And she's getting paid to babysit. Ah. And she has her boyfriend over. Yeah, you know, um, I didn't know anything of those customs. I was never a babysitter, and generally my babysitters did bring their boyfriends over. Yeah, <laughs> many babysitters too, but I'm just saying, usually, it's, it's polite society. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, I think I only had a babysitter like once or twice. But I had two older sisters, I was just gonna say, you had siblings. so they could they could do the job usually. All right, let's get back to work. I had not that many babysitters because my parents never went out. <laughs> <laughs> I told you right that I bought them a weekend away yeah. when I was eighteen. And what'd you do? Bring your boyfriend in? No, but I got scared out of my mind. Yeah, you've never been alone. You're, you're, you're not used to being alone. Excuse me. I used Pick to up. live. Um, I mean, it's a main road that I'm off of, but it's not that much of a main road. So when you're driving at 2 o'clock in the morning, you don't have a lot of cars on that road. You're typically the only one. And I took the left onto my old street. I mean, not my old street, the street I'm off of, Ballard Street. And there's this car following me real closely behind me. And I'm like, what the hell? And I'm looking in my rearview mirror and all this stuff. And uh, I almost did the thing that they used to tell you to do. I don't know if they still tell women to do this, but. Drive to the police station. Yeah, drive to the police station. I almost did that, but I thought to myself, I'm paranoid. You know, this is ridiculous. No one's following me. Pull into my driveway, car pulls, actually turning onto my street, the car turned on the street. That should have been my first clue. I pull into my driveway. The car pulls in behind me in my driveway. <laughs> so the one thing is, is I had like a, a close knit neighborhood, and I was about ready to just like attack my uh, uh, cop horn just to like, eat my horn for like crazy and wake people up. But then I realized that it was like, one of my friends. She had noticed that I was driving home, and she knew that I was alone that week. So she just wanted to fuck with you. No, well, she claimed she wanted to check in or check with me, make sure I was okay. Okay, that was 19 minutes for the first F bomb. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. I didn't say that. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, okay. I was like, I didn't use the F bomb. I didn't even. Um, yeah, no, she claimed she just wanted to check on me. Since she saw me, she's like, oh, I'll just check, you know, make sure she's okay. It, with no thought whatsoever that you, she just scared the shit out of you. Nope. Yeah. Where did, where did you send your parents? 
I sent my parents to an Irish cottage on the Cape. Yeah. Yeah. I forget what the name of it was, but it was it was themed, you know, the whole clovers and all that fun stuff. And actually, um, Uncle Earl and Aunt Merle went with them. So it wasn't even a romantic weekend. <laughs> Actually, though, the well, my father was pretty sick by then. Yeah. And didn't really, probably, he didn't probably even realize that he was going, which is one of the reasons why my mother, like, finally booked it, is because she realized my dad was not doing well. And, um, so I don't know what it was. I, I don't know, I don't remember much about the, what they said they did on the trip or anything. necessarily get to see my Aunt Myrtle in her prime. Oh, well, yeah, she, he was kind of still all right when we met her, but uh, the two of them in their prime with my mom and dad, no matter what the hell they were doing down there, I'm sure they were just having a great time. They have a good time just going out to dinner on Saturday nights. Difficulty making a woman's longer nails. I I don't have long fingernails. They don't look, they always look fake to me when I that looks fake to me. But I'll live with it. Now, let's see. So we'll be holding the phone. edge of the nail. And then they got fired. Yeah, no, well, I have to do a little bit of thinking here. See how the hand looks. Okay, call that good enough. And I'm thinking she's wearing James wearing biker shorts. Biker shorts? That's a fashion choice. Yeah, well, she's home, barefoot. She has those. She has those um, uh, Brie Larson feet. For your small feet? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. No, I was. I, my, All women want small feet. There's no effort. Oh, yes. And I was teased unmercifully for my large penis. Charles. Yeah, sure. Charles. <laughs> I was. My friend in that was like, oh, my God, how do you even stand? Yeah, I got that, too. <laughs> no, you walk around with that thing. <clears throat> I guess next week we can do some more cell phone jokes. I usually do do the joke where Fido gets uh, Bo's phone and texts Jane some sort of dog activity, whereby she can. The humor is in the mistrend. Is in the uh, 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 him doing a dog thing and 
her thinking it's a bow. I'm just thinking out loud here. Mm -hmm. I got. Let's do a strike on the side of these shorts so that they read as biker shorts. And your Brie Larson feet. And that's all done. He's got to do the background. She's got wine glasses on the table, that's a typical Jane chair, wainscoting, curtains. And to, uh, build a whole world around these people. All right. Let's get rid of that. Okay, mostly background. We'll ink these characters. All right, let's uh, let's choose our weapon. Here are our brushes for today. Remember, the oldest one has the plastic bit on it. Pretty decent tip. This one looks worse for wear. I guess we're choosing number three. Looks like a nice tip on it. The, uh, the finest in squirrel pubic hair. We have to send the Sherpers up the mountain to acquire the squirrels. I want to know who the first person was to realize that they make good brushes and why. It's sort of like who was the first person to eat an oyster. Yep, yeah. exactly. No, chicken egg. <laughs> so what did we see on TV? Oh yeah, FUBAR, the Arnold oh, Schwarzenegger yeah, yeah, yeah. television yeah. show. It's really unusual to see an elderly Arnold Schwarzenegger on TV. It is. And, and he's, God bless him, he's pulling out his classic lines, <laughs> yeah. even when they make no freaking sense. So I, was, so I was thinking, you know, it's a new thing these days to have uh, elderly action stars do television shows. We've had Sylvester Stallone do whatever he's doing, and now FUBAR with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, we um, need to bring back Mr. T. Uh, uh, uh. Clubber Lang, the character, Pity the Fool, who, uh, this, who, who stole Rocky Three. You know, that's not a bad idea. So, I've um, come up with this one. Rocky Three Part Two, The Legend Returns. Mm -hmm. Here's the synopsis. Mm -hmm. Rocky Three Part Two, The Legend Returns is an exhilarating remake that revitalizes the iconic boxing franchises. With Clubber Lang, played by an elderly Mr. T, taking center stage as the main character. Set several decades after the events of the original Rocky III, this film explores the enduring spirit and determination and redemption. Clubber Lang, once a formidable challenger to Rocky Balboa, has aged gracefully but has never quite found the peace he desired. Despite his previous glory, he feels unfulfilled and yearns for one last chance to prove himself. Oh, no! Meanwhile, Rocky Balboa has transitioned into a successful trainer, guiding young fighters toward victory. We've seen this Rocky character as a trainer. This will be in between one of the films. As fate would have it, Clubber crosses paths with Rocky once again and pities the fool. Oh, over the years, <laughs> the two former rivals. Nice. <laughs> over the years, the two former rivals have gained a mutual respect for each other's fighting spirit. Rocky recognizes Clubber's unquenchable hunger for redemption and offers him an opportunity to rekindle his legacy. Clubber, facing his mortality and grappling with his past mistakes, accepts Rocky's offer. Together they embark on an arduous journey to train Clubber for a high-stakes exhibition match that will pit him against a rising young boxing prodigy eager to make a name for himself. I'm thinking we could probably even bring in Michael P. Jordan for this one. During his uh, grueling training sessions, Clubber discovers that the true battle lies within himself. He confronts his inner demons, reconciling with his past and seeking forgiveness for his reckless and antagonistic behavior. Wow. 
Along the way, Clubber forms an unlikely bond with Rocky as the aging legends inspire each other to push beyond their physical limitations. As the climatic exhibition match approaches, Clubber realizes that victory transcends mere triumph in the ring. It symbolizes the personal growth, redemption, and the legacy he wishes to leave behind. With the unwavering support of his newfound mentor and a renewed sense of purpose, Clubber steps into the ring one last time, ready to face his fears and prove that age is just a number. Rocky III Part Two: The Legend Returns pays homage to the original film while exploring new dimensions of character and legacy. It showcases Mr. T's powerful performance as an older Clubber Lang, serving as a testament to the enduring spirit of determination and the undying pursuit of personal redemption, reminding us that true champions are made both in and out of the ring. Okay. When in the hell did you come up with that? All right. Now, we're on a writer's strike, right? Yes. I went into chat GPT. You know, uh, it's an it's a AI. Oh, yeah. AI thing open AI. AI. And just typed in, give me a synopsis for Rocky Three Part Two. Boom. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's the future of uh, movies right there, people. Yes. I pity the writer's strike. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, one of the guys that we listened to on YouTube said, gee, no one's talking about the strike anymore, probably because the writers went up to the producers and directors and said, we want this, and they were like, uh -huh. okay. yeah, All right, whatever. Yeah, okay. We're not going to work again until this Okay. Yeah, that was uh, in case you haven't heard of it, heard of it yet, uh, chat, OpenAI. dot com. It wrote that synopsis for me, and all of it, it took it less than a minute. Good luck now, with that writer strike, guys. Now, do you have to join this? No, it's free. Free open source. Mm -hmm. I suppose someday when they perfect it and it actually is writing full Hollywood scripts, right. they'll start charging. They'll have some, they'll, they'll probably have some kind of a, a cap to it or some sort of a pay scale to it. Mm. How many words do you want? <laughs> I want 800 words. Okay, we're going to be $800. No. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I can see it going on, or uh, going out there as something like uh, Adobe Illustrator has, where they charge your like uh, ten bucks a year and do see, all the updates. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's feasible because of copyright laws. Like, what if two of the same people did the same well, you know, the story? Theoretically, that should not happen. Theoretically, it Be should not. You're yeah, right. Because this I mean, is supposedly an AI. and uh, In order for there to be variables, it has to be like the multiverse, meaning that one, in order for there to be so many unique properties to it. So many monkeys in a room with typewriters. So no. Um, all right, you've got a story about um, the Rocky, Rocky 3.2 or whatever. Um, script. In order for there to be so many copies, one of the copies has to only have the change of like venue where the fight takes place. So, in copyright terms, the stories might, some of the stories, if you have enough of them, might be super close. Yeah. And it's like how. That's how it is today. Yes, I know, but they have, they, they do have, like the whole, you know, they have to be 25% less in the costumes and that sort of thing. <laughs> so they do have rules in place. I'm not saying it's always followed, but let's pretend that the rules are followed. I'm wondering how that's going to work when it comes to the AI, because you can't really say someone stole your idea because the idea was created by an outside source, but then if you're, I don't know, 
if you're both using the same story, and you put the, out the mistake that people are making with AI, they think it's going to be just one big thing. Artificial intelligence will be millions of little small programs, right. each one working independently and probably fighting each other. The AI will never attack mankind because it simply doesn't have any reason to. It'll yes. be protecting mankind from other AI. <laughs> you have to show how you've never seen the Matrix. Uh, well, act, rather, yeah, the Matrix. Terminator. Yeah, Terminator is what I was thinking about. But yeah, that, 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 will, that will never happen. There'll never be one big, all-powerful AI that's going to try to wipe out the human race. It'll just yeah. be millions of little ones fighting each other. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's where it's going to be. I am a futurist. I am a cartoonist. I am the, I am the God-creating God character here, with all knowledge. <laughs> Who hurt you, honey? <laughs> The legal issues have not been settled yet. No, and I'm just curious as to what, how, what avenue you, you would go down for this. I am eating my freaking hair. It's driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. How's it taste? Not good. You gotta change your conditioner. I know. You would think with those, uh, what, you think you have cocoa and honey conditioner. It, it'd be delicious. No, this is like <laughs> a flour conditioner. Oh yeah, see, that's a mistake. I always want like a Mai Tai flavored conditioner myself. <laughs> I'll have the chocolate chip cookie brownie flavor shampoo today. So in the theaters, we have the release of uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Actually, it's Spider-Man, colon, Into the Spider-Verse. Very important that you get the punctuation proper. Hey, punctuation is everything. It's a, uh, I, suppo I suppose they're, they're calling it a kid's movie at like almost three hours long, two and a half oh hours long. Oh my god, what kid is going to sit there? What you what kid has the intentions bit? Um, someone made the joke on the um, on the internet. Um, um, bring in a focus audience, and whenever the kid first pulls out the cell phone, that's how long you make the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you have to cut stuff down, like, don't necessarily stop it there, but like they the, 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 as Chris Gord put it, let's renormalize two-hour movies. <laughs> a yeah. One hour, one and a half hour movies. Uh, they, oh, why, when did you get, when did you get, when did you get movies that block It's, I, believe it or not, you have to blame streaming. They yeah. no longer have to edit things. You, they used to say, cut what you love, edit things down, never put mm -hmm. a movie that long because we, uh, we need to show more of them in the theaters. They, they don't care they don't, about the theaters anymore, these people making these films. They're... They're thinking of their streaming service. If they make them longer, they get more hours in the streaming service. Eh, yeah. But as someone who's taken her fair amount of children to movies, we, uh, I'm not. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Uh, well, the, the, the theater is no longer their bread and butter. The theater was where my little Caleb officially became my favorite. Because he sat there watching Spirit. Remember that? Well, you probably don't remember. Probably... Is that the one with the horse? Yeah, this is the one with the horse. He sat there watching Spirit. I guessed. And he, um... <laughs> I don't know. We were, we were pretty into the movie. And he was, you know, he was enjoying it and whatever. But he was just almost folded hands sitting next to me. And he was very quiet. And he all of a sudden, he turns, he kind of hits, 
know, my side or whatever to get my attention. And he looks at me and he says, am I behaving okay? <laughs> His parents probably put the fear of God into him. Like, yes, How old was he? Oh, he was little. Couldn't have been more than like six. Mm. Six, seven. I was a terror at that age. I know. Well, they, he was a terror at home. Well, not a terror, really. But, I mean, he was, you know. I, like I said, I think they put the fear of God into him. And he just sat there all perfect. I think it might have been his first ever movie. So, he might have even been younger. I, like that. At that age, they took me to see Jaws, the first one. Well, that's not too bright. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm that film was lost on me at that age. It wasn't yeah, until I saw it many true. years later that I got to appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess it would be lost at your age. I was just thinking, oh my God, who takes the title to Jaws? But. It was such a crowded theater that it, I think eight of us went, and we had us sit in small groups all over the place. And I sat with my cousin Michael, now since passed away. And... Uh, I think I, I think I had my my hand over my eyes for most of the film. Whenever that dun dun, dun sorry, uh, uh, yeah, right. as a as a six year old or five year old kid, I was out. <coughs> I didn't see Jaws in the theater. I saw it when it came to to uh, uh, TV, which if you know that is probably Bertie. Hmm. Probably. Do you remember back in the day when a movie would go on in the theaters, it would be in the theaters for X amount of time? Star then, Wars was in our theater for years. I know. Star Wars <laughs> was in the theater in Saugus for years. Is yeah. that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Saugus or was it in Roseboro? Oh, well, my, uh, yeah. mine in my hometown. Yeah. But, but yes, it was also in the, the one in... Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, and then, like, if you missed it for some reason, like if it wasn't a Star Wars that was there for years, but if it was some, you know movie you wanted to see but didn't get a chance to see it, you would have to wait years years for it to come out. And then when it came out, it would come out on TV and half of it would be cut for commercials or for dirtiness. Or and then resized to fit a 3 by 5 Yep. So it would be pretty significantly different when it got to the uh, TV. But literally, we're not joking, years before it would come to TV. And even when there was um, rental, like when they started doing these uh, DVDs, not DVDs. VHS. VHS, thank you. When they started doing VHS tapes, I mean, those took like a year before you, it would get out, and then you'd have to rent it from her. Blockbuster. Oh, we have streaming and on demand now, and I and I think uh, Mario, which just came out last week, has just started on demand. Oh, did it? Yeah. So it's still it's still in the theaters. It and the and the they're putting it on demand. It's surprising that they would put that on demand so early. Because I was actually still doing pretty good. Yeah, this, it's still making money in the theater. But there. So. Well, we watched Cocaine Bio, and Cocaine Bio was still. I don't think it was still in the theater, was it? I think so. Yeah. I think it came out simultaneously in the theater. Right now. Yeah. There's a movie now that... I couldn't I, tell you. Yeah. There's a movie out now that I, I see every now and again when I sign in, and I've been wanting to ask you if you wanted to see it, but I keep forgetting. So and I'm guessing that you don't remember the name of it. I will. <laughs> I have 30 seconds. I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, name some of the movies that have come up first. <laughs> No. Yes. <laughs> well, we saw Maverick. So back on topic, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Miles Morales's uh, thing is out in theaters, and I haven't seen it. I'm not going to see it. It's not. I didn't see the first one. But um, our, I'm I'm a fan of Shad Brooks. He does Shadow Versity. I first met Shad when he did a detailed breakdown of the Last Jedi's sword fighting, and how much how much nonsense it was. Uh, Shad is a uh, is is a professional larper, I guess. He he does he does all that middle even that medieval sword fighting stuff. But um, Shad was 
irate over this film. Uh, he said they didn't finish it, they just ended. <laughs> and he had no idea it was a two-parter. <laughs> oh, that was him you were listening to? I'm yeah. not sure who it was. Yeah. Chad was very upset. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm hearing nothing but good about the film itself, saying you know, it's okay. Uh, but still, I'm they're not interested. Because um, I, I used to read Spider-Man comic books when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And boy, have I lost touch with the world. Um, here's the um, cover of one of the Miles Morales' Spider-Man things. Uh, this is um, the villain, uh, the Hobgoblin. He's, uh, he's a villain from the era in which I read the Spider-Man comic books. Uh, uh, around 252 when um, Peter Parker finally got his black Spider-Man outfit. They're tired of drawing the red and blue one, I guess. But um, <clears throat> apparently, Miles Morales now shoots uh, lasers, or it's called a spider sting. Uh, let's see. Uh, spider sting? Yeah, a venom blast powder, power, which in its base state allows him to use an electric charge to, to, to sting his enemies. And actually, he's able to turn this one, you can see it here, into a sword as the hilt so spider-man basically has a fucking lightsaber <laughs> <laughs> boy have i lost track of what ha what's going on with spider-man now uh, yeah yeah here he is with his uh, lightsaber <clears throat> yeah but in his world right yeah in his world and i mean that cosmically his world mm -hmm. so not just his multiverse or his particular Peter Parker? No, I don't know. I, I, I'm completely out of touch. See, um, Spider-Man is the biggest selling toy they have. And yeah. Yeah, see, that's more or less what they give you. He's doing the peace sign here on this hand, and he's got, uh, well, Kung Fu grip over here. I guess that's, hmm, what do you do with a right hand like, I don't know. So anyway, um, that's, <clears throat> yes, <you> do. <laughs> that's, um, that's Spider-Man. Um, this is Miles Morales. <laughs> He's got his sword and his shield. <laughs> I think uh, Spider-Man has gone wrong somewhere. <laughs> you know, in, in my day, they, they did put him in the black suit, but then the black suit turned into a supervillain called Venom, and now he's got his own franchise. Yeah, I, I, I've completely lost contact with uh, Spider-Man. A long, long time ago. Uh, the, the lightsaber-wielding Spider-Man, which is what they're working with these days. Again, I've heard it's a good film. If you're into that sort of thing, go see it. They need the money. Desperately. <laughs> It's Sony, not Disney. So, oh, yeah. so you, so you're not, <laughs> you're not um, contributing to that bad habit that Disney is trying to pay for. <laughs> they um, apparently are scrambling for money now. They need to come up with uh, at least ten billion for their put call on um, January first for. Uh, Comcast, or give their biggest competitor 14% of their company, which would give them the largest share of the company. Even BlackRock doesn't have 14% of Disney, and that's at least two seats on the board. Yes. <laughs> kind of a lose-lose situation. Yes. I, I do not believe in a million years they're going to go through with it and get Hulu. There's no value in it. It's Disney is doing this all the time. They buy something that's very valuable, and then they ruin it. What have they done with their Fox uh, acquisition? They made a Predator film, Prey. What have they done with the Muppets? Nothing. Well, they did an adult show a while ago. Yeah, but how, that was, what, six episodes of even? Uh, yeah, it wasn't very successful, uh, Kermit and Miss Piggy broke up, and uh, 
and all sorts Was of. Carmine and Jackie dead? Yeah. <laughs> little tadpoles to support. No, no, no. Um, no, no, Jackie no, it, it, nothing issued from that relationship. Uh, bestiality oh, and all. Oh yeah. Ooh, I just didn't realize. Yeah, the there's a pig and a that. frog, you know. Uh, yeah. Now, would that be a freight mm. or a pog? Mm -hmm. And uh, what else is Disney? Well, gee, Star uh, Lucasfilm. I was going to say Star Wars. It's Lucasfilm in general. It's a creative company with no creatives. Mm. That's a shame. Uh, back in, t little, well, before 2020, I, uh, when Iger was going to leave for the first time, I uh, put my hat in a ring to be the, become the president of Disney, but I don't want that job now. That 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 company is not fixable. You have done too much damage to it. Well, they used to um, have the parks to back them up, but I don't know if the parks. Are well, uh, we were just watching that report from WDW Pro this morning. Uh, the parks are not doing well. Oh, is that what you were saying? Yes. And <clears throat> and. I was coloring. Big surprise. They're, they they just been milking the parks for to, to pay for their habit. <laughs> and they're not doing the maintenance. They're not cleaning it. And they keep raising the prices. So you're getting a, a clientele that's paying more money for it. So they really probably not appreciating it being dirty. Well, I can understand going for the wealthier clientele. That's a that's a good move. I don't care one way or another. If Cap doesn't want her, that's fine. But what I'm saying is, is if you go for that kind of crowd, then the expectations will be higher. So you can't even get away with not paying or not. Uh, yeah. You have to be better in a lot of ways. And a, a lot of the Disney crowd, if it's not wine moms, they're, um, well, incredibly low-class garbage. They're, high, they're having fights in, on, on, on Main Street USA. You know, outright fist fights. And where's Disney security? Mm. Right. I think I've seen maybe three, diff three separate videos of, of, of brawls on Main Street. Now, don't get me wrong, there's also been a, there was a near riot at Universal a little while ago. But they got the cops in there quickly. until I was an adult is how uh, very self-governing they appear to be. Well, yes, they think they're the Vatican in this country. Right. They, they really don't want to um, involve others in their stuff. And Governor DeSantis seems to have disabused them of that situation, <laughs> of that idea. <laughs> They are going to lose that lawsuit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the Homeowners Association said I could build a nuclear power plant. <laughs> Look, I've got the information for the HOA right here. <laughs> um, inside joke. I probably should explain that to the audience. Uh, Disney is claiming in their lawsuit that they're... Um, Freedom of speech has been violated, and they're being punished for um, the, the don't for, for supporting the, the don't say gay law. And the punishment is we're taking away their ability to have the homeowners association let them run things. <laughs> you have taken away a perfect community. They only got that because they claimed they were going to build a city. Epcot oh. was supposed to be a legitimate city. Mm -hmm. Then after Walt died, they said to themselves, do we really want people living here who might vote us out? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's, hey, I have an idea. Let's build an amusement park. <laughs> That'll just make us money. And that's what they did. Walt had all these grand ideals, and they just threw those out the window and, with the casket. Walt doesn't have a casket. He's very down below. 
Apparently, yeah, apparently yeah. it is. Just his head is. She, yeah. Oh, that's true. He yeah. might have had a casket for his body. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I, I'm wrong. All right. Finished characters done on this one. And it looks like we just have backgrounds to do with our remainers. Uh, Monday and Tuesday here. And there's Saturday. Oh, yeah. Let me do the borders on this one. That way I can get it to dry. Do some work on the lettering tonight. We had to do special lettering here because it's text lettering. It's upper and lower case, different from my normal slanted cap all capital. <clears throat> all right, we're going to start out of frame, but you'll figure out what's going on in a second. Do a straight line, you just take a metal edge ruler, place it on an angle, and run your the finial of your brush along the edge of it. Human eyes are good at sighting parallel lines, and I can judge that that parallel line that I've drawn here is, see, see how it's off? See how it's off, but it's on. Are you giving away the trace secrets? Well, every once in a while, you tell them how it's done. Who knows? Somebody out there might have a dying need to draw a straight line with a brush. And now they know how to do it. Yep, that's the stupid cartoonist who thinks it's fascinating that you can draw a straight line. Yes, I think it is fascinating. Don't um, uh, belittle your... Oh, I'm full of internet hate out there. Don't worry about it. Don't belittle your um, audience. I love my audience. They just know, don't... Just they just They just don't love me. <laughs> oh, oh. Some love too much. <clears throat> I was thinking if I had some time today, I'll take the uh, people who are going to become char characters in the comic strip. Where are they? There we go. Take the people who are going to become characters in the comic strip and I'll do a caricature of them, show you how that is done. And that will also get them, I'll, I'll at least have two people, one, two, who will watch the entire broadcast just to catch that. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me draw you. <laughs> what are you going to do, Charles? At the very end. <laughs> it's, uh, we're going almost an hour now. I usually keep these to an hour and a half. So I guess toward the very end, yes, we'll... Uh... <clears throat> I'm not going to do it until I'm good and ready. That way, uh... You have something to look forward to later in the broadcast. Stick around and watch me uh, make a caricature out of Mia and Grace. I wonder if the chief colorist would be kind enough to get me some paper so that I could actually... Uh, do perform that caricature. Okay, right now? You got, you got a half hour. Okay. Is 
I was going to say, I'm just trying to kind of clean up a little over here myself. So. I'm looking around. I don't. I just have Bristol over here. I guess a couple pieces of the uh, printer printer paper would do. See, um, these people are friends, and they're asking me to do what would otherwise be considered a kind of cruel thing. Because when you're drawing a caricature of someone, you're not necessarily being polite. It's actually usually done in a bit of derision. And I have no umbrage in my heart to these people. I really like them. It's just a... Uh, now they're asking me to make fun of them, really, when you think about it. <clears throat> okay. Sometimes people don't realize that they're asking. Yeah. Don't hate me for what I'm about to do to you two. <laughs> Ladies, I know him better than anyone. Take heed for what are you saying. It's a rainy day, I suppose you're having a few arthritic problems. My arms are tight. <laughs> <laughs> and all I've been doing is coloring, and now I'm trying to clean up a little, and my arms are like, what are you doing? I'm like, trying to do something. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you do it on us? Yeah, exactly. No. I dropped, oh, uh, well, it looks like only three colored pencils on the floor. So next time you're uh, venturing out of man's land, if you could grab those for me, that would be most kind. As you continue your constant battle with gravity. Well, here's the thing. I have a battle with gravity, and I'm unable to pick up after myself after my battles. Do you so. know I forgot to put the legs on that table. Hit the camera there. Well, give me that paper. What the hell? Gonna let that dry. You only got a little bit of ink on me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, let's let's start with Mia. Um. Classically, they tell you in art school, draw an oval, bisect it, and right there, that spot is where the nose goes. Uh, Mia's got a very small upturned nose, so I'm just going to do that to begin with. And uh, look at those, look at those eyelashes. Now, my typical characters would just be like that. Yeah, I'm just going to draw a stock face, so and the air would be about right there. Now let's let's turn that into something that looks a little bit like Mia. Uh, do I? Well, we have to overdo the eyelashes, obviously. Ladies, this is part let's, of how he, uh, he let's get these. Over. These are full collagen-like lips. Huge. Remember, our, remember your travel books. Now, pointy chin, so and the hair is like a heart shape. Well, we can do a 
long thin neck, which actually beats it's actually a lot of my characters are like that. Let's get rid of some of these guidelines. And uh, those are huge eyebrows. So that I've got to accentuate. I'm making this these big. Uh, got a little bit of airing there, which is underneath these curtains of cascading locks of hair. I guess the only um, the thing that's going to discern me from anyone else is just the heart shape of the head. We'll do a something like that. I don't want to do her eyes like that. We want to cartoon the eyes out still, so that we're seeing this big innocent. Bambi-like character. And, uh, well, that's a simple Mia. Uh, we don't need to do the rest of the body. But we'll slope down the shoulders more. Give her, a, give her that look. But, okay. That's how we'll do Mia. Now, um, Grace is a little bit more difficult not to um, insult. Grace, Grace is a very nice woman. Now, obviously, what we're looking at here, uh, shape of the head, pointy chin, everything, but she's got a large center proboscis here. So, I'm just going to start out again, putting everything where it classically would be. See, ears, ears go from the top of the eyes to the bottom of the nose. So the, even though we don't see her ears in this photo, we're probably not going to see her ears in the, car, in the comic strip. And she's got these straight, thick eyelashes. They are almost like straight lines that then go down. Actually, they are so straight. Let's start playing with them. Let's just do a straight line roller. And I have a suspicion here that she has little mermaid eyes. As remember I um, discussed a couple weeks ago. Do I still have that? I probably do, but can't find it. I discussed a couple weeks ago that classically when you're drawing a character, you see that's the size of the eye? That space should be the same space between their eyes. And no, little she, Mia has little mermaid eyes. Uh, probably about a third of a distance too far apart. So that's something we gotta pick up in the illustration. And her eyes are much too far apart. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is the same distance. <coughs> and let's, uh, well, I'm just going to draw that now. So, uh, since the nose is hanging kind of low on her face, we're actually going to move the nose down here closer to the mouth and it's going to be much wider. Yeah, grace is going to be very difficult to not be insulting. 
Tell you what, I wasn't going to do this, but let's give her... Let's see how this starts to work out. She's got a crooked smile. So let's... Uh, And again, let's center part of the hair. Do a few down here and see what, at what point we can start getting this to look close to the actual woman. Uh, long, long thin neck again, which is, which I like. Uh, Bet that matches my character style. And we're just going to do a simple shirt here. Uh, her hair does come down to her shoulders. Now, I'm not happy with that nose. And while I'm at it, get rid of the And let's say we just simplify the nose by doing a turnout and that. Still a crooked smile. She does have a little dimple there, so we'll do that. And I see a spot right there. There we go. She got that spot. Not, she doesn't do her eyebrows quite like Mia did, you know, how huge those things are. So I'm not going to do anything with her eyebrows. But let's, um, let's make these eyes just a tad smaller because they're so far apart. by bringing them down and uh, I'll just have her look this way they look like they're hazel kind of light <clears throat> alright we're approaching where Mia goes she has a few hairs that do this in the middle So it's not like a perfect center part. Uh, I think that will be an important part of the whole hair look. All right. I don't want to do that exact smile with the teeth out. That's just not my style. And she's probably not going to have a speaking part. But let's get the shape of the face a little bit better. See, we've got a cheekbone here. Oh, this is actually going to be what you're going to be using in the strip? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought this was just no. the side. No, no, no. Uh, she'll probably just be a background character in yeah. the bar. Yeah. And we got to point that chin. She's got a much pointier chin than what I'm doing here. So I'm going to... For some reason, I thought this was something separate you were doing. No. Okay, well, we're approaching where we want to be. So, pointy chin. Let's, uh... I might not use this, but let me just see what the nose would look like in real life if I were to draw that. That... That, that, and that. Eh, I might do. I might stick with that nose. I want to keep the mouth simple, just a crooked smile. Uh, well, she is an Asian woman. If I make the eyes slightly more.
slightly more um, um, almond shaped. Um, yeah, I think the defining characteristics are the very straight eyebrows, pointy chin, and the way the hair does that. Well, we're close to how Mia's going to look, but it's not perfect yet. Not, not Grace looks. We're not perfect yet. <clears throat> so we'll think about this more, Grace. We're not, I'm not done with you. Mia, that's more or less how you're going to look. Put that aside. All right, what are we doing on time? A minute. Uh, we've got about 15 more minutes. Still got a wet ink brush. And where is my ruler? Oh, there it is. Yeah, well, this is this is our moment of zen, where everyone can relax and not have to listen to the darn cartoonist. <laughs> yeah, everybody taking a deep breath. Yeah. All they can hear is you in the background um, organizing your pencils. It's sort of like an uh, AS, know. sort of like an ASMR moment. I was just gonna say, do you think it's getting picked up? <laughs> Yeah, say classic cat clinic. <laughs> and look, I forgot again. See how the window is sort of ending equal this with his chair, so I got the window here. I didn't draw the window over here or over here. Oh no! Yeah. What were you thinking? I'm just having it's a continuity error. Have to remember to do it later. <coughs> A big challenge here is not to schmear. I thought we agreed smudge was the better word. Smudge schmear. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Bottoms up, everyone. Uh. Okay, now, that should state. Being a cartoonist is the greatest job in the world. And if any, if everyone out there knew how cool a job this was, all we would have out there are cartoons. As nobody would want to do anything else. And, Society would collapse, and we all would all starve, and probably be invaded by uh, some foreign oh, oh. country. Uh, well, actually, no, be in the world. 
Yeah, some aliens from another universe will easily take us over. Yes. So, even though I'm enjoying this, only I can do this. No one else can. No, it, uh, we don't want anyone else to be a cartoonist. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've already gotten rid of Scott Adams as a cartoonist. <laughs> yep, we already knocked Scott out. <laughs> well, Scott knocked himself out. <laughs> Got himself canceled for reading a Reuters uh, 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 poll. <laughs> well, he shouldn't have done that. Uh, he should not have done that. <laughs> Silly man. Thank you, Mr. Adams, for making more room in the comics pages. I haven't seen his strip since he stopped uh, sending me the emails. I guess uh, I guess his website was run by the syndicates. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Cause I would have thought that that would have continued. Well, he he did start the website himself early in the strip's uh, life, so I thought he was running it. But obviously, that's not the case. We sometimes catch Scott on his uh, live stream broadcasts on YouTube, but I haven't seen his comic strip since. He like well, he Howard Sterned himself. Yeah, I could probably go out there and find Scott's comic strip, but I'm man, I'm just not doing it. Nothing against him. It's a good thing that Scott's on YouTube. I'm freaking Howard Stern had to do that uh, low rent gong show to keep himself in the public eye after he went to XM Satellite. I think he just quit that. Yeah. I'm not mistaken. I feel like he has Broadcast television is not what it used to be, so. He was on that for a long time, though. Yeah, I know. So, he tried to make it work, but... Yeah. Plant off in the corner here. And the chair. I feel roughly confident that nothing I say here will ever get me cancelled because <laughs> no one watches this. <laughs> Sure, there's anything likely I would say that would be cancelable. Oh, I, I mean, I, I, I'm just, I, I have a, I have my general love for all of mankind, and I'm just so open and free and honest, and, and you know, people like honesty. You are honest. People you like are, honesty. You are honest. Until you're honest with them. No, That's a George Carlin quote there. Because then you're an asshole. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not that people don't like honesty. It's that sometimes you, don't, you just don't have to say it. I just wonder if Grace is going to still talk to me after this. I'm, 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 I don't yeah. know, sweetheart. Here, let us give Grace a little bit more air time here so that she doesn't feel bad. <laughs> She's a lovely woman, mm -hmm. good friend, innocent. She didn't know what she was getting into. Nope. I mean, he put glasses on his cousin who hasn't worn glasses in forever. 
The guy sent me a photo with him in friggin' glasses. What did he expect? <laughs> in fact, I'm pretty sure when we do grace here, we're doing that shirt <laughs> with the puffy sleeves. I like the puffy sleeves. Uh, check it out. I mean, that's, this is usually easy, easy to cartoon. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing those puffy sleeves. <laughs> You'll be forever immortalized with puffy sleeves. And that's a very, very straight, thin body. <laughs> I love those puffy sleeves. Those are, those are great. All right, let's put Grace away. Oh, while I'm thinking of it, we also have Jan Flores, a guy from Aus Jan Flores, a guy from Australia, who um, we have to draw a caricature for as well. But Jan has yet to really send me a picture. Mm -hmm. I've had to sort of well, go by what I can see on the internet. He's got like one classic photo of himself on a motorcycle. Maybe next week we'll pull Jan into this mess and uh, add him to Mia and Grace. I'd like to give each of them their own um, appearance in the background, mm -hmm. but I might cheat. <laughs> Throw them all in together, who knows. Depends, on, depends upon the joke. I doubt the characters will ever become part of the storyline itself. Well, I'm sure uh, Jan will be upset about being surrounded by two beautiful women. Well, he's quite the ladies' man, so he says. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> My biggest problem is um, after um, doing this, I generally send a printout or even the original art to the uh, person. And it cost me five bucks to send one, like two towns away. I know it's going to cost me uh, a lot more to send something to Australia. <laughs> I've sent him comic strips in the past. I think it's like 25 bucks in shipping. Nothing, you know, I, can, I can handle it, but it's, just, man, it's a real hassle to go to the post office these days. You know, wait in line forever. And... and you gotta deal with those people. They're a lot like banks, I assume. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been in post offices, obviously, but it's been a super long time. Well, we literally have one within walking distance from where we are right now, and I would not walk there. <laughs> you walked all the way to, to 
Yeah, yes. I, the car got towed, and I walked all the way to where they towed it to. It was, you know, it was fun. But walking in that direction is a completely different uh, can of worms. I don't want to open. Oh, hey, I was thinking I um, might do some grocery shopping tonight because we're almost out of everything. Why don't, why don't you, while you're sitting over there making noise, make a list. <coughs> well, like you said, I'm the ASMR, whatever that's called. Oh, okay. Grace, will you excuse me? Go right away here, please. Thank you. She's so kind. By definition, frozen meals are garbage, so... I know. I know. I'm going to, you know, keep trying at it, see if I can find something for her. Yeah, I'm not purchasing groceries for her as well, am I? No, no. Oh, I, good. I just have groceries on the mind. All right. No, I was hoping to make this like a quick in and out sort of thing. Yeah. Only take like four to six hours. Don't you freaking dare. I didn't see you all day <laughs> Yes, we know. You're not used to being alone. <clears throat> um, <laughs> so far I have one word, cheese. <laughs> yeah, you also need more frozen fruit. You just went through the last of it a little yeah. while ago. Yeah. You want me to do this in order of the store, though? Uh, sure. Um, actually, now that I think of it, this is probably not the sort of thing we should be discussing on a live stream. <laughs> You sure you get the those sanitary pads? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say crap like that. You just did, but I wouldn't. I thought you meant because then people would know you're out of the house and stuff. No, you don't understand. This is no longer a live stream. This right. is being so recorded. Not, it right. doesn't go out until tomorrow. That's what I was going to say when oh, you okay. said that. I was going to say it doesn't matter. It's not really live anymore. The reason why this live stream is not live is I do not trust, I do not like the technology yet. I hope someday the technology comes to a point where we will be able to do this. I know you're going to say, but millions of people do live streams every day, Mr. Cartoonist. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't like the quality I was getting out of uh, StreamYard. It's a great program. I hope someday it's usable. Do we need eggs? Always. Do we need butter? Yes. I'm trying to think of things for you to buy that require sour cream. 
We got a big tub of sour cream last week. And I ordered it online. I didn't realize how big it was. And <laughs> just we don't use that much of the we product. We really don't. We don't even really use that much when we do use it. We yeah. don't use it that often. <laughs> I'm wondering who who this tub was made for. Uh, yeah, what, what what? Well, yeah, but what do you put sour that much sour cream on? <laughs> I can I, I can live with like less than a cup for. Baked potatoes and sour cream. <laughs> for a long time. Well, we were using it for tacos. Yeah, we probably should redo the whole taco thing again this week. That will that will eat up the sour cream. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Let's see. What am I doing here? I guess that's. They're out of order on the thing here, but. Don't worry about it. I know. See, I just want to do all the curvy lines here, and I'll come back later on to do all the straight lines with the ruler. Okay, and that is that. Is this dry enough yet? You remember I just did the borders here a little while ago. Hey, let's let's pull I pity the rider struck. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm putting this piece of paper down so I can rest my hand on something and hopefully save it from a, a smudge. Now I hope everyone recognizes the Helvetica font that everyone uses in their cell phone chat. Or at least it's the closest I can come to it. I'm back on the TV. Oh, hey, we have to come up with a title for this. Oh. A pitiful <laughs> come up with a title. I think I think we're pitying the writer strike. Okay. Mm. Salsa? Nope. Do you want pico de gallo and salsa or just Sure. Pico? We'll use it. Okay. Now, why people take pictures of their food? Okay, whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. What? I wasn't talking to you, Chief okay. Colorist. I just noticed that just about everyone I know who takes pictures of their food also seems to play golf and invest in cryptocurrency. 
I'm not sure. Yes, I'm not sure if there's a correlation. But if you are an investor in cryptocurrency, go check your Facebook pages and see how many pictures of your food is there. <laughs> Do they also play golf? That seems to be another thing the food picture takers do. I'm not sure. They don't post pictures of golf. They don't yeah. talk about golf. So. Yeah. Being a, not a fan of the great outdoors, I could never see myself on a golf course. We stay on a golf course. <coughs> yes, coincidentally. I, brief, I actually briefly thought about it. You know, playing, renting some gloves, playing around, but that bad idea went out of my head very quickly. A friend of mine played golf in school. That was sort of like, you know, one of the. The school had a golf thing. That was one of the extracurricular activities. Like, Which you know, some, fool, some, fool, you know, some, some schools have football and baseball. And the this, first school you went to or the second one? What are you talking about? Which school had golf? Uh, New and Prep. Oh, oh, oh! I thought they were in the off school. No. <laughs> <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Ah, uh, cluttering's done. What are we looking at from time? I think we're done here. Let's uh, always be sure to put the cap back on your ink bottle. Port safety tip there. You don't want to know what happens when you don't do that. And we gotta go wash our brush. Up. Oh. So I guess we're out, everybody. Yes. Until next week. Bye. Let's uh, let's put. This up here, uh, I pity the writer's strike. And we are out.